Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait. It is the Monday Mayhem Wrap-Up. It is the Parading Hall of Famers edition. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And uh, with me is my uh, hetero podcasting uh, life mate, uh, uh, Mad Mike, with us from Beacon, New York. Mm-hmm. I, I, I watched the Jane Silent Pod trailer this oh. weekend. <laughs> Sorg, can we just talk about Comic-Con stuff instead? <laughs> Well, hey, nostalgia's big in both that and Monday Night Raw tonight. Of course, I had a big weekend as we'd like to start off with something positive as as, as much as we can here. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we did have um, a really fun time this weekend. Two shows in the area, both Saturday night. We got to go uh, record between us. Uh, uh, the wife went, went and joined uh, by Jam- Damien over at Rise Wrestling with a Y. And uh, our, uh, uh, well, I went to Prospect Pro Wrestling where I. Also with a Y. Uh, there's no Y. No, there's no Ys in there, actually. I don't know. No, there's no Ys. Um, even Stevie is an IE. Uh, but, anyways, uh, <laughs> that's where I got to uh, check out Pasta Deathmatch 2. Fans bring the pasta weapons. Sorg. Sorg. Have you seen any of the gifts or the clips from this no. yet, Mike? Sorg. Sorg. Was there a Taipei Penne? Uh, well, actually, close. There were okay. boxing gloves with penne attached to them. Yes, that's I how accept we. That. that is. I accept if, that. If you go see the clip on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook or uh, uh, YouTube, um, you can go see that confrontation. Actually, okay, I accept that. Okay, I, I, that's close. It's, it's not that's, bad, that's, right? That's more like pugilistic penne, but yes. I'll take it. There's a lot of pugilism. There were there were there were pasta kendo sticks. There was a bed of pasta that they just dumped all the pasta in. There was um kind of a a a spaghetti nail bed kind of situation. There was um they they played they were they're just like they glued pasta to baseball bats. They uh there was like kind of a bowling ball instance. There was there was this one with kind of penny sticking out of it. And I was like, if you guys like you guys like could probably maim each other with this thing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm watching this thing. I got sprayed with with pasta shells. Nothing cooked. That was the rule. Nothing cooked after because they threw uh, they threw a plate of pasta at the crowd. Well, no in the one wants forty one. lashes with a wet noodle. That is true. But as they're going through, and I talked to Mambo Italiano afterwards. Mambo Italiano and Chess Flex are of course involved in this thing. Prospect mm-hmm. Pro Wrestling. It's live on the Indie Wrestling Network right now. Um, and uh, and I'm looking at like Mambo's back as he's like going by me while I'm filming him, and he's got little like like blood spots from like where he's been sword, poked. Sorg, sorg, we Italians call that gravy. Mmm, I see, <laughs> I see, dude. Have you seen Have you seen Mambo Italiano? No. Oh, as an Italian, I think you'll appreciate him. I. See, I want to watch it, but at the same time, I have a picture in my head that I don't want to ruin. Oh man, I think you're you should go watch it for sure. Um, I, you, there are I, you you we there, I, I have places for you to watch it. Uh, <laughs> one of the benefits, one of the benefits of being the, on the inside over here. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. You you get the links, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, a lot of stuff going on. Hey, everybody's got to stay informed around here about what's going on. And of course, Rise Wrestling, a lot of good stuff. I, I, I again, I don't know if you've seen the the clips or anything. There was a contract signing. For a big with, with pasta? Wow. No, no, no. This is a different show. This is that Rise? I, I know. I'm just kidding. It was it was Shirley Doe and Brandon K and okay. Grindhouse and Rise people were all around. Um, there was a pretty big jump across the table uh brawl pull apart was it was it a lumberjack contract signing it was ki- it kind of was well it was for like a five on five uh uh match that's gonna happen next oh month, uh on uh, okay. the first first saturday of the month with rise and uh and, and yeah there was a pretty good it was a pretty good moment and uh again damien uh damien lynch uh you see you photographer a lot of the uh some of the promotions out there but he, he helps us with video as well right, just between her and uh, uh producer missy was uh filming that show just great job all around all night with that we got some uh chikara uh still life with 
uh, Apricots and Pears, I think I got that name right, was a part of this, uh, as well as E.M. DeBorest, and, uh, and, and The Whisper took on Jinx. I know all those words you just said. <laughs> Welcome to Chikara. I know. I need Riz to ex- – literally, we, when Chikara came to Pittsburgh a couple months ago, I sat next to Riz, and he just explained everything that was happening in front of me. I love S- Chikara, but I don't keep up with it, and there's so much going on. Mm. Like it sounds, it sounds fascinating, but it also it? just sounds. It also just sounds like you did Mad Libs. <laughs> I think that's how they come up with characters in training, the at the Wrestle Factory these days. But it's no, it's great. It's it's pretty good. It's it's it's, it's some good stuff. Um, uh, I need an adjective. Ant. Uh, 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 <laughs> worker. Um, artist ant, maybe. Um, uh, so so Mad Mike. Uh, here's here's probably the shocker. Uh, of the rise with a wide roster and people that have been on the Mayhem show, which of those members do you think brought a knife to the ring? Mm. I'm going to say Jinx. No. Wow. Okay. No. I'm, gen- I'm genuinely shocked. Well, you remember we had a, kind of an incident at the end of the Mayhem show with the Honey Badger. Christian Noir kind oh, of broke in. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And her partner, um, when he heard it was D- no DQ, uh, Lee Moriarty brought a knife. Oh, oh boy. Um, did someone say that's not a knife? That's a spoon? No, <laughs> no, no, no. There was a lot of weapons and the referee kind of threw them all out. But um, yeah. Okay. That's probably for the best. It is. Um, it is. It is. Who wants to play a game of knifey spoony? Um, anyways. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all of those literally. Hey, if, if Raw's going to talk about the 90s, we can use outdated Simpsons references. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's 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 in the that's it's the night for it. Right. Yeah. Um, so a lot of stuff happened. And again, both those uh, rise with the Y wrestling and prospect pro wrestling, as well as the third edition of Breakfast with Champions. And also uh, with the perhaps at the end of the show, I'll let you know what the next uh, table for three ripoff is. Uh, show that we're going to do is going to be called and that we're going to be filming this week. Uh, so I'm not really kind of publicly saying it a lot, but we'll, we'll, remind me, Mike, I want to, I want to reveal this because I think you'll get a kick out of this too. Uh, okay. We're going to be filming that this week. Uh, the plan is knife to a gunfight. No, knife to a wrestling match. Um, anyways, uh, so Raw had a lot of nostalgia, a literal um, parading of Hall of Famers. I, I, all right, hold on. I have, I have a question. I have. It's a very important question. I can't tell if someone is a representative for the entire current active roster or unofficially retired Sorg. What do you mean? Alicia Fox. Oh. I, I can't. Because the last 15 minutes of Raw, spoiler alert, you don't need to watch it. <laughs> or you've probably seen it before. Like No, 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 you don't need to watch it. You mm-hmm. literally do not need because nothing happened. No. Like zero happened. The main event of Raw was nothing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody came like, out to Ric Flair. That should have been held mm-hmm. after Raw went off the air. Mm-hmm. That's an exclusive dot com thing. We got to see all the people, and that's the point. And that's why nope. we tuned in and got the nope. ratings on Raw. Uh, no, no, no. You know what would have been a main event on Raw, Sorg? Mm. If all those people came out, every single one of them, right? Okay, all those people came out. As soon as the glass shattered and Austin walked out, the lights went, and Bray Wyatt took out every single person on that stage. But he took out McFoley. No. The better result is he takes out every single person on that stage, mm. because him taking out Mick Foley was negated by Hulk Hogan's moron ass talking to Mick Foley. Oh wait, we got Mick Foley. I didn't notice that Mick Foley was out there just he no was, selling. He wasn't out there, but Hulk Hogan was like, "Oh yeah, brother, remember that spot you did earlier? I'm still talking to you, like you can hear me." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Thanks, God. Hogan. Thanks, Hogan. Like, the one good thing they did tonight was negated by Hulk Hogan's moronic put-myself-over-ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, there was some feedback. By the way, racist. We should also mention he's I, a racist. Okay, okay. okay. He, we, we he blocked me on Twitter. I don't care. <laughs> 
there's that. Uh, well, I, I wanted to uh, because uh, somebody was was busy on uh, the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show group, um, just uh, spoiling our show for us. Uh, mm-hmm. yep. Dave Podner, old man Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, uh, says, quote, channeling my inner mad Mike, this show may be entertaining, but it does nothing to help anyone here next week. If it produces a ratings bump, that will only hurt the show since uh, what is needed is consistent, logical storytelling. Old man signing off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically. Uh, like, uh, like, sort of. I ask this question a lot. Mm-hmm. What happened on tonight? Oh, course? tonight, literally nothing. Tonight was, I, I mean, the 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 biggest thing that happened was that our truth drove off. Hello, with, hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, like the fir- you got Kelly Kelly music. Yeah. That's how we distinguish all. I'm sorry, all the blondes look the same to me. So the girls in the classy. I literally had a problem identifying many of them. I, if we weren't doing like complete like complete uh um um Christmas special oh hey it's so and so uh I I don't know no. Jordy is in the in the uh, uh uh wrestling ma'am show Facebook group says who cares if it's for ratings and desperate moves these Hall of Famers and legends paved the way for generations we have now so I, I feel like the problem is that we get this too often it's not special anymore um let's see no, six months it's time for not. another. Time time for another reunion. Uh, somebody I saw tweeted, "If this is a makeup for uh, Raw twenty five, mission accomplished." Okay, but we had Raw twenty five. Who 25. cares? Who cares about Raw twenty five? Who cares about Raw reunion? Mm-hmm. Like, like none of these people put over current stars. They can talk about their brotherhood and their sisterhood all they want. None of them put over any current talent except for Mick Foley. Everybody got a payday. Of course, Foley did. Jeez. Yeah, Foley was the only one who put over someone. That that was that was literally it. Hmm. Like, <sighs> the only cool thing, and I will say this: the only the only other cool thing was Bischoff saying that if Mike Kanellis is fed up with Raw, he can go to SmackDown. Ooh, a storyline. That was kind of cool. And an admission on screen that somebody runs the place. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was wondering how Bischoff was going to factor into the show. Mm-hmm. I, did, I didn't think he was going to be a big deal, but I was wondering how he was going to factor in. I, I like, and I, I'm hoping it's just like quiet nods like this, because Heyman said something about, and if you haven't heard, I got some stroke around here, you know, mm-hmm. but didn't really, like, we're not coming out and saying I'm a general manager, right? I'm in charge or anything like that. Yeah. You know, so, I, and I think, I really hope it stays that way. And um, Hey, Sorg. Hmm. What was your favorite women's match tonight? Oh. What, oh, what, no. What was, your, what was your favorite women's wrestling match tonight? Oh, no. We had a talking segment. Sork, there was nothing. Wait, no, no, no. My favorite no, women's wrestling no. was when Kelly Kelly won the 24-7 championship. Sork. Sork. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Jeez. Whoa. Sork, the only women's official Woman versus woman wrestling we got on this show was a minute of Candice Michelle and Kelly Kelly. <laughs> that was it. So, so they're, they're, that's why I hate these shows. Mm-hmm. That's why I hate. And Alundra Blaze, I thought she was going to come out and actually challenge someone. And we might have had an actual match for the title. But no, b- because even though it's a Raw reunion, she pulls back to something she did on Nitro. Yeah. Like, there was no fucking point to that. And also, the point was that the entire title, the only running storyline on the show, was garbage. Mm-hmm. That was the story. But then... Ted DiBiase paid a lot of money for it and Which instantly putting value. It shouldn't count because it didn't count when he did that to Andre. Listen, we don't have President Jack Tunney to uh I don't even I don't even remember how he lost it. Who? DiBiase? Yeah. He didn't. He, he did? was never he was never a champion. He is not officially recognized as a champion. No, I'm talking about the twenty four seven championship tonight. 
he oh was in the he got in his limo oh and then and that rabble, was a, rabble rabble and Drake knock Havre knock knock me. yeah okay okay you're right so no no I'm not <laughs> I'm not debating a 1988 storyline in WWF <laughs> I just I'd just want to make that. that no I remember what happened I, I, there I'd, I'd, I'd rather do that this WrestleMania way. four let's watch hey Mike let's watch WrestleMania four okay. <laughs> It has a gr- it has a great story. It does. It does, it man. We need to we need to, we need to go Muffin back. Man and Liz have four different outfits for that. Show. I wish I had like like you know four hours of time that we can sit down and watch party stuff like that. But honestly, Mania Four isn't even that long. Uh, you know, isn't it's, it? No, it's it's not. Wow, it's a, I remember that being it's the, maybe the, a little bit over three hours. I remember that being the double VHS tape. It was the double VHS tape, but maybe it might have been a little over three hours. Mm. I think it was the longest mania at the time, but it still was not that long. Yeah, yeah. I think it was shorter than Stomping Grounds. I'm always surprised. It was what? Well, no, Stomping Grounds. Stomping Grounds was a shorter pay per view. It was. It was. It was. It was only like two and a half hours, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Rob's saying it was two tapes. Mm-hmm. Oh man, oh, my, my chat's not updating apparently. Um, do do do. What? I have my. Mania stats Excel file here. I can tell you exactly you have how many. You have an Excel file. Oh, from when you did the thing. From when I did thirty manias with Mike. <laughs> I have an, I sorg. I did the math on this. I did an Excel spreadsheet for that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Rob says he does. And yet I was able to convince a woman to marry me. So there's hope. <laughs> there's hope for us all. There's hope. This is not something I. I did to get paid this was something i just did in my personal life mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah okay. Uh, uh, okay wrestlemania 4 was three hours 33 minutes and nine seconds okay okay it had, it had 16 matches yes three t- three yes. title matches two title changes mm-hmm. one gimmick match 23 manager appearances Listen, it it makes fifty six wrestlers on the show, Sork. The fact that I had two VHS tapes it makes it just as important on the shelf right next to Titanic and Wyatt Earp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um so WrestleMania four also, at least as of WrestleMania thirty two, had the record for the most matches at a WrestleMania. Really? Yep. It may have been beaten by thirty five. I don't know. I da- oh damn, I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to update these stats for up to thirty five on that. It might be time. It's been a Sorry. while. It's been a so, few years. Do you know um, how long I, how the cumulative time to watch WrestleMania is one through thirty-two? Hmm. A hundred ten hours, fifty-two minutes, and fifty-two seconds. Oof. Yeah. Literal. Wait. How I, many? I, I did that. I did that for this show. Sorg. Hold on. Hey. Hey Google. How many hours is in a week? <laughs> 168 hours what did you say 110 110 over yeah. a week of wrestlemania yeah mm-hmm. sorg i did that for you i did that for this show <laughs> did that for you guys out there i did it for the rock i did it for the people at least <laughs> the mayhem <laughs> people oh, sorg geez. do you know what wrestlemania had the most title changes hmm WrestleMania 16 with 14 title changes. Four, oh. Hardcore title. Well, maybe they'll be uh, angling for... Do you think the 24-7 title will still be around at WrestleMania? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be I, honest about I, this. I hope not. Yeah. I really hope not. Yes, Rob, I did that off the clock. Yeah, no, no. This he wasn't getting paid for that one. He, he was. This was not enough. This, this, this was, isn't. This was just something I decided to do for myself, and I'm not sure why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, Rob, Rob had a fun experience this weekend too, and maybe if he has any notes, I know he's dropping some in the Slack earlier. Um, he got to do a one of those NEW uh, uh, Under the Stars uh, baseball field shows. With I think I, I I think he said the Lucha Brothers there was a issue with their plane so I don't know that they made it but it was like Kurt Angle and Jerry Lawler and and you know all of that uh, oh yeah Christy Hemi Funaki I know Funaki was still doing signings even though the sh- show got postponed here uh, Friday in Pittsburgh so um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I woke up with Wheels' phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, Android users out there. 
now <laughs> now you also know um I've, I've been told how long a week is so um yeah anything else it, anything else worth discussing i mean it was it, it was it was oh, all right Let, let's talk about let's talk about the segments that actually involve current talent okay all um, right the for, oc you, it, no fuck that i'm not even <laughs> about that. california california don't call yourself the oc no that's orange county california mm-hmm. or if you're an indie mark that's orange cassidy like just call yourself the club and also then you're like you know i think somebody said like what part of scu is that yeah exactly it's it's the worst faction i've ever heard of but but it's a thing now because they have a shirt so yay yay Mm -hmm. um they we got a little bit more with cedric and drew mcintyre which okay that was fine um looks like roman and Samoa joe are gonna be button heads a little bit Mm -hmm. i don't hate that nope no i'm fine with that Mm -hmm. um Oh, I'm trying to think of what else. Ricochet wasn't on tonight's show. What do you think about Natty and Becky? Oh, God. Natty. Natty's not ready for this. Okay. Nat, like. I don't know who. Uh, like, Becky seems kind of like she's healing out here, but. No, no, Natty's trying to be a heel, but Natty's also tried to be a person for the past 10 years. Right. So. Right. Yeah, I saw I saw a tweet. I think it was Brandon Stroud said Natty's almost ready for that Turing test. Mm. And uh, N- Natty has never been the best promo. Mm-mm. Um, she's never been the best wrestler either. Uh... Like, what, what? Why isn't this Nikki Cross? Right. Why isn't this Nikki Cross? Because Alexa, we're, we're like because we're in Toronto. I know. That's but... the reason. I, how about a three-way then? That's the reason. Now we got to create a story. How about a three-way then? That would be fantastic. Like, and Natty can be a face in her home country. Mm-hmm. Because then you can have, like, you can run a tag team match. Becky and Natty versus Nikki and Alexa. Like, we can do stuff with that. Like, let's make it a three-way. But, because, like, Natty's not winning. We know she's not. Mm-hmm. Unless she brings out Ronda fucking Rousey, and nobody wants that. Could be the return. Like, like there was even a post on WWE.com this weekend. Does Ronda Rousey need to come back? Like, that was a question WWE.com Is that asked. a question for her or for us? For us. And my answer is an emphatic no. Ooh. <laughs> Tease uh, pointing out, I'm just waiting for shimmer footage to drop for the feud between Becky and Natty. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. Probably, but uh, Natty, like her strong suit is her wrestling, and her wrestling is not (laughs) even that good. Corey Corey Gray is apparently a comment from uh, uh, Rob. Corey, any mention of Canada and a heart just appears? Is that how it works? But but Natty's not a heart. Mm. I no, she's Mm -hmm. not. I can't stress this enough. But Uncle Brett. But Uncle Brett. Guess what? I have an uncle. His last name is Perry. Does that make me a Perry? No, it fucking doesn't. I'm Natty's not a heart. <laughs> Natty is not a heart. Okay. She's not even married into the Hart family. Wait a minute, but her dad is. Right? I don't think so. I thought mom is a heart. All right, I have to look this All up. All right, somebody gives a family tree of the hearts. Because you, 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 you like... Jim is related to Brett. Like, that was a thing. Jimmy Hart, not related to the Hearts. Just pointing that out. Um, but her mom's a Hart. Yeah. So, uh, confirmed by Rob in the okay, chat room. Okay, yeah. All right. So, she is? But she is by marriage. Whoa, 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 whoa. She's the daughter of a Hart. No, she's the daughter of a Neidhart. Her name is Natalia Neidhart. But mom is a Hart. Mom's name is Nightheart. Now but she got mom, married. But mom is a wait. You don't marry out of the family because mom isn't. Yeah, but if you change your name, all right. It, it, 
she she was never billed as this episode Natalia. has been brought to you by twenty three and me. Uh, <laughs> she was never billed as Natalia Hart. No, 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 no. But, but her she, name is not Natalia Hart. <sighs> <sighs> All right. No, no. I, I I know what you're saying, but at the same time, if they wanted to bill her as a member of the Hart family, mm-hmm. call her a fucking Hart. Say she took her mom's name. Mm-hmm. Just like McGillicuddy. Exactly. Just like McGillicuddy, just like Mike Canellis. So what the fuck? Um, now, TJ, uh, not a heart. TJ's not a heart? No, no. not even a little bit. Not nope. even a little bit. That one I'll give you. Um, and Bulldog also married a heart. He's married yeah. it. Nightheart is married it. Yep. But if you are a spawn of a heart woman, you are a heart. Unless you bill yourself as a night heart for 10 years. <clears throat> Moving on. You can't have it both ways. Family tree mayhem continues. Yeah. Um, Can you nothing to discuss from Raw this, tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't want to talk to me about Lion King or something. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, me either. Me either. I haven't seen it yet, Sorg. Harry is a heart. Teddy is a heart. Teddy heart. Whose heart uh, is that? Whose heart kid is that? Let's stop talking about the fucking. He's the one with the cat. He has a cat, and then Natty thinks she's a cat. It all comes together. So cats cut better promos than Natty. Oh, oh, like Jesus. Yeah, the ones that Dutter sends me definitely do. Yeah, Natty is terrible. She's not. And Becky's Becky's trying to be nice. Let's let's let's, you can tell. You can tell Becky really likes Natty because. Becky, in her promos with Rhonda, in her promos with Lacey, Becky eviscerated them. Mm-hmm. For, because she, you can tell she doesn't like them as people. Mm-hmm. Becky likes Natty. And you can tell. Because Becky really wants to tear into Natty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can tell. And oh boy, is there a lot of material. <laughs> like, it... And it's it's a shame because we're getting a watered down version of Becky Lynch going into the second biggest show of the year, and that's not what you want. No, no, and, and like now the match will be fine as and barely any acknowledgement. There's not much. I, I mean, I guess we have a little bit set up for SummerSlam now. Not excited. No, not, not feeling very SummerSlammy. So no, far. I, Maybe, I, 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 I don't give a fuck. I mean, it could be because we're we're taking a back seat for this Raw reunion this week. But uh, generally, it, it doesn't feel like we're about to go it doesn't into feel like the biggest party of the summer. By the way, I, I'm looking at the front of WWE.com, and they just have a picture of everybody standing in the ring. And it's like the Where's Waldo of wrestling legends. Yeah, except for and Hurricane sticks out. Oh, and uh, Samoa Joe, um, I, I I did not have a hand in running Samoa Joe's promo this evening. Okay, good, because uh, I was wondering about that. Regardless of what people may think, I think uh, Samoa Joe has been given the Kevin Owens license to actually speak freely. Mm. <clears throat> but, and, all right, and here's the thing. If you're going to have Stone Cold Steve Austin on a show, and you don't do something with him and Kevin Owens, <gasps> what are we doing? It's a lot like, of it's a lot of a lot of opportunities and what are we even doing tonight? I just wanted Kevin Owens and Austin to toast beers with with Kevin Kevin Owens having a Molson. But you know why that last segment existed, right, Sork? Hmm. It was a fucking commercial for Stone Cold's IPA. Oh yeah. That's cool. all it was. That's all it was. That's the only That's reason. That's how we got him on. And the fact that he has a, a USA Network show coming up. It's the only reason he showed up. Mm-hmm. It's the only reason he showed up. It's fucking sad. It's fucking sad. Brotherhood, my ass. You came back to plug a product. Yeah, mm-hmm. fucking chill. <laughs> By the way, Alexa Bliss in a Burger King commercial. I didn't see that. That was during the tag team match with the... Was it during the Usos match, I think? I was slightly late, and my DVR wouldn't let me watch from the beginning of the show. I missed the first, like, ten minutes as well to catch, like, John Cena. Yeah, apparently John Cena came out and talked Mm -hmm. and said he's never leaving and then left. (laughs) Didn't stick around for the match, but Devon was hanging. He didn't even come out for the toast at the end. Mm -hmm. You'd think 
you'd want John Cena out there well, with all of those legends. I got early, I guess, guys, I, guess, I got early call time on uh, uh, who's smarter than a fifth it. grader. I got to get out of here. Sorry. Yeah, I got things to do I, being I the next Jeff Foxworthy. I guarantee that was it. He's become the rock. But like a less profitable one. A less pro- <laughs> Are you saying he's rock light? Yeah. I want to see. I, I, I am curious to see I how. Guess, you know, I do have Spectrum. So so, so I'm trying to think because who's had a better. Oh, this is a big question. This is a big who's question for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, like film career. Oh, like, no, Rock had, well, Batista. Rock has had the best. But No, Batista's had the best. Batista. Mm. Batista is in the highest grossing movie of all time. Yes. <laughs> He's a wonder. I actually rewatched uh, Avengers Endgame uh, Thursday night. Um, Isn't it great? It's, it's wonderful. I, and I watched, I, I put on uh, in the background while I was working before, the watch Infinity War beforehand, went out and watched it uh, that night because, you know, mm. hey, you know. Um, but uh, it's just my phone is stuck on you just going, ah. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, it was it was fantastic, and just thinking like that's fucking Batista. Also, I watched Stuber a week ago, and that wasn't half bad either. Um, you know, I mean, it's I wouldn't go to the theater to watch it, but it's a wonderful. I movie. would say Batista is the best um, film career of a WWE wrestler. Whoa, better than a Rock in general. Mm-hmm. But Rock has to be the highest grossing. Oh, I'm not saying anything about money. I'm saying about film quality. You're just talking about stuff you enjoy. You enjoy the the career stylings of one B- Dave Batista better than one D- Dwayne Johnson. I haven't even seen all of either of their movies, to be honest. So I could be off base, but The Rock is the only reason I watch Ballers. I watched the first season of Ballers, and then I just stopped. Uh, Hotel Artemis. It was mostly a bit part, but it was it was it was Batista as a la- as a as a heavy kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. What's another movie he's popping up into coming up? Well, he he was in Bond. He was in Bond. Was he was a henchman in Bond. He was a he was in Blade Runner. He, I have not seen the new Blade Runner, but I just figure I'm going to fall asleep as I do when I watch original Blade Runner. Sorry. Yeah, but he he was he was in Blade Runner 2049. He was a Bond henchman. Like Batista's Batista's doing work. He's doing work. And Rock is making another Jumanji movie of Kevin Hart. <laughs> Listen, which I'm going to go watch. Listen, that's, I'm, I'm going to be honest about this. Because the first one was fine. Also, uh, like, Karen like, Karen Gillian, also in Stuber. Oh. Yeah, I, they, I know they don't have I mean, she's It's a really big part. It's, 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 okay. So it was like a cameo. Yeah. Yeah, do I spoil Stuber? Where, um, where's that line? We, was that? we accidentally spoiled Endgame for Tina. Hold on a second. I think I got a button over Pretty here. Sure All right, ignore ignore that it says Avengers Endgame, and uh, there we go. There we go. Not Avengers spoilers. Uh, yeah, no, she's the um, she's the the partner at the beginning that gets killed, and, and oh yeah, course. like the, the the classic plot and everything. Yeah. Okay. So at, at some point, I gotta change this from Avengers. It's like the Rock got Avengers. killed and the other guys. But I figure if I say Avengers spoilers, you never know, and they're not gonna pay attention if they see the mm-hmm. video on here. That's um, right. So like, and somebody's like, "Why are they talking about Avengers? Is this a repeat? I don't know. Why, no, I'm gonna talk about Stuber. There's there's some really interesting. <laughs> there's a swerve. The daughter's involved, etc. <laughs> Uh, everything for her shadows, everything else in that movie, and yes, that's what it's like to be an Uber driver. All right, that's it. We can take down our spoilers. I think we're good now. Yeah. All right, Mike. Anything? Any last notes here before we get out of here? I'm gonna take one look at the uh, if I can okay. if I can load up the chat room and see if anybody else has anything uh, oh, to discuss, not- or 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 if anybody else is, is pissed about my Stuber um, spoilers. Or Sork, let's just let's just talk about Marvel Phase Four and Marvel Phase Five. <laughs> Let's just let's just talk about that. All right. I, What's your I, quick I, hot? Give me your quick hot take on Marvel Phase Four. Um, I love all the inclusion, and anyone that doesn't take, can go fuck themselves. The inclusion, like all inclusive, like entire Asian cast for Shang Chi. Val- Valkyrie's gonna be a lesbian. Female Thor. Um, Black Panther two, like Blade. Just, just, Blade. just Black Panther as a whole. 
<laughs> yeah, Black Panther as a Black, whole. Like, Black Panther again is is just like, good news. Rob, I think Moon Knight might be showing up on something that they haven't announced. They, yet. Well, they randomly just said, "Oh yeah, and we didn't mention uh, Phase, uh Fantastic Four. <laughs> just like yeah, what? yeah, that was the oh by the way we haven't mentioned Fantastic Four. Oh, did we mention there's going to be a Fantastic Four? Oh, and Sorg, Sorg, you want you want to hear my fantasy booking for how they for how they're going to do X Men? Hmm. All right, so Multiverse. my my fantasy booking for how they're going to do X Men is in Doctor Strange. They're they're going into the multiverse. What? Yeah. What's the title of that? It's like it's like it's it was mysteries, like mysteries in the multiverse. Or yes. Something like that. Um, the post grad scene on that. Doctor Strange shows up to fight one of the mindless ones that has appeared in a desert somewhere. And he comes across old man Logan. <laughs> oh boy. Sword, because, oh boy. Then, because then, and you have it be in continuity. Like the reason whatever happened to the X-Men in Logan is because Doctor Strange asked for old man Logan's help on his earth. Yes, yes, because then you can have Hugh Jackman play old man Logan, but you can have a new Wolverine be on the X-Men. Oh. You're welcome. You're welcome. Man. It's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. The, the but... fun part is going into multiverse but, means they have license to do whatever we, the hell they want. We didn't think that a certain character in, in the Spider-Man universe wasn't going to come back to us <laughs> so if that can happen and i'm keeping it spoiler free just in case tina hasn't seen spider-man yet get, can we just get like a multiverse explanation for the other spider-man movies uh there already is one sir it's on netflix watch spider-man into the spider Verse. that is true that is true they did, That's they did really not do it. wait so does that wait, mean toby the, sork sork if we ever do the clone saga mm-hmm Andrew Garfield is Kane hmm? and Tobey Maguire is Ben Riley. Oh. Yes. Book it. I Book can't it. remember which was which. Andrew Garfield was amazing and Tobey Maguire was Raimi. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. Uh, Mike, I promised some news. Yes. We're going to be um, title pending, but I, everybody's really excited about the food item. We're going to have filming here Wednesday night. I can't tell you when the release is going to be. It's whenever I can get around to edit it. Waffles with women wrestlers. I, I have a feeling it was going to be waffles. <laughs> <laughs> when you said people were excited about the food I am, then I was like, it's going to be waffles. Oh, we're even we we're even uh, uh, attending to people's dietary uh, concerns. Uh, please keep it oh, on the chat here because I, I unfortunately can't open it at the moment. Um, Sorg, I'm just glad you're not calling it chicks and waffles. No. No, we're. I'm already having enough trouble trying to be PC around certain things tonight on Twitter. I know, but yeah, but, I do. That's the last thing. Waffles I do. does sound kind of great. Plus, the women that I'm gonna have on this show can easily kick my ass. We're talking honey yeah, badger, but they might they might appreciate a good pun. We, I know honey badger would appreciate the that. Pun. Is true. That is true. We're talking about honey badger. We're talking about bloody adorable jinx, and we're talking about uh, the queen of the silver screen, Katie Arquette. Uh, oh, will be a part of this. So uh, I, again, it's going to be uh, like the the breakfast with champions that we w did with uh, Jack Pollock, uh, Reaper Matt Connor, and uh, the gavel David Lawless. Uh, they're just going to be gathered around and have a discussion. Not, not similar to any other show on some other wrestling network at all. Uh, no, nope, because there's just women in wrestling eating waffles. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. Okay. And gracious that they're they're coming um, here by the studio. Uh, we are not streaming this. This is the, we're just filming it for later. Uh, there may be some Im imagery if you check out Twitter and social media that night. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, this is going to be just kind of a closed recording. But it's on the way. It's in the works. It's planned. It's scheduled. I think we have everything sorted out. I just have to set it up for Wednesday here now. And uh, on top of that, we are also going to have the Wayward Sons, who just debuted in Prospect Pro Wrestling. Uh, they will be here at 8 p.m. on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook feed. We will have John McChesney, um, who I have threatened. Uh, mm -hmm. He is, of course, one of the co-owners of Revenge Pro that's going to have their year anniversary this Saturday in ERPA at the Avalon Hotel and Convention Center. 
that we will be there filming. Uh, but I have warned him because he says he doesn't know if he's going to be able to have live video for this. So I said I was going to get a loop of him getting the shit chopped out of him by Loki uh, some uh, 12 years ago. Uh, you know, and maybe I'll tell a story. John McChesney, John McChesney getting his uh, 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 chest caved in by Loki was the first indie wrestling locally that I watched on television. And it introduced and it me to available on Disney Plus. Actually, it's actually probably on the as part, as part of the, the the Marvel's Loki series. Yeah, the, no, low key, low, low key. key. Yeah, we're we're saying the same thing. Impact so. Wrestling's low key. Yes, and what I'm saying is his kicks were so hard it would not surprise me if he was the god of mischief just came just coming up with his own character. I can't do any more with this. Um, also. Oh, or, or, um, sorry, I know you're wrapping up, but um, Matt Carlins has asked for an explanation in the chat room. Of what? For his wife on Lady Thor. Lady Thor? Uh, the, quick... Thor. Uh, the quick summary is oh, Jane ahead. Foster is worthy because she has been around since phase one, motherfuckers. <laughs> she is worthy because she's dealt with Thor's shit. Yep, basically. Basically. Hey, you're worthy if you dump a god. That's all I'm saying. And she dumped him before he got fat. Think about that one, kids. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Right there. No matter how perfect someone is, there's someone out there tired of their shit. I think most of us are in the age group that will appreciate that. Apparently, on this uh, Sorgatron Media podcast network, thanks to our friends at Pittsburgh Current Podcast, I believe it's going to be remote. Uh, it's exciting. If he's at, actually, he might be here in the studio now I think about it. Our guest will be Thomas Ian Nicholas. Uh, he is the actor. What? what? <laughs> Sorg. Ho- hold on. Hold. I'm just finding out about this now. You're having Henry goddamn Rowan Gardner in the studio? <laughs> Yep. Uh, well, no, no, no. I don't know if he's in the studio. There might be a Sorg, Skype call. Sorg, Sorg, you're talking to. You're gonna be talking to Henry fucking Rowan Gardner. Explain for anybody who doesn't know. If if you don't know, one of the cinematic classics. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. Point of order. If we can call Jillian Hall a legend, Rookie of the Year is a cinematic classic. <laughs> Point of order. One of 1995's cinematic classic Rookie of the Year, Thomas Ian Nicholas, stars as the titular Rookie of the Year. <laughs> Henry. Is that how you say that? Henry Motherfucking Rowan Gardner. <sighs> A boy who could not play baseball for his life. Ran in during a little league game, slipped on a ball, fell really high in the air. Wait, hold on. I got to throw the spoilers really? up for Rookie of the Year. Hold on a second. Or, there you go. It's a cinematic classic. If you haven't seen it, just just stop watching right now and just go watch it. It's probably on one of your streaming apps. Or, fuck you. Just go buy the DVD. Give give Tom C. and Nicholas some money. I'm sending this go to buy the, the current DVD. tomorrow. <laughs> It's a blind buy. It's amazing. It's a blind buy. It's a blind Did buy. You talk about American Pie. <laughs> Sorg, I'm still talking about Henry Rowan Gardner. Okay, he slipped on a baseball. Right, fell 15 feet into the air, crashed on his pitching arm, and Sorg, wouldn't you know it? They had to put him in a cast the whole time. He was like this all summer, Sorg. It's tough. When you're in class, people don't know the answer. Guess what? You still have your hand raised. You really identified with this. Sorg, I have watched this movie more times than I have watched Stone Cold Steve Austin drink beer. Mm. That's a lot. Sorg, but when the cast was removed, do you want to know what happened, Sorg? It was something magical. His tendons were wound too tightly, Sorg. And whenever he would rotate his wrist... It came with such ferocity. He caused his doctor to have a broken nose and scream funky butt loving. Wait, that was the TV version, That's, right? No, no, that was the movie. That was so, so this is a family movie, all right? It's a family movie in 1995. It's a, a cinematic. Mere mortals' classic. muscles would die, exactly, says the chat. Rob, 
Rob knows what I'm talking about. Uh, he also says, uh, "Child saves major, major League Baseball team in sh- in the short term was a genre in the mid '90s." The funny part is, also, I have also not to the part where he throws a baseball yet. Also, <laughs> also, dogs saving uh, uh, sports teams also along yes. with that. Um, but Sorg, as as his cast off day present, wouldn't you know it? He goes to a Chicago Cubs game. <laughs> wouldn't you know it, Sorg? He's sitting on the ivy. We're just gonna keep going. Sorg, if you want, before your interview with him, uh-huh. I will do an entire dramatic telling of the entire plot of it. I think you are right now. Uh, well, I, 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 I want to. I want to say I, I'm not book. interviewing him. I'm engineering the interview Sorg, for somebody else. You you will be in the same zone as Henry. My fucking rolling guard. Um, I yeah, and I and actually will be if he's not here in the studio. I will be Saturday morning at Wizard World. Uh, our friends at Comic Book Pit will be doing a session at Wizard World at the at the convention center, and I'll be on hand to record that before driving to Revenge Pro. Um, Excellent. and also, uh, somebody in the chat room, I believe it was Jordy, uh, was saying that first time he saw my John, no, it was Rob. Uh, first time he saw McChesney was live in 2005 when he beat one AJ Styles in Butler. And whatever happened to that kid? No one knows. No one knows. No one knows. He's in, oh, no, he's in California now. Oh, that's right. That's right. Orange yeah. County. Okay. California. Mad Mike 483 on the tweets. Go by Rookie of the Year. <laughs> and oh, no, oh, no. I just went by. Oh, no, oh, no. I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, sorry. I forgot to hit the thing the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> and Sorgatron on the Twitter. A lot of stuff going on. SorgatronMedia.com, WrestlingMameShow.com. We'll see you guys tomorrow night as one Chris Lur- Oh, let's do it again. No, 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 no. I keep hitting the outro by accident. Uh, one Chris LaRusso will be joining us in the studio. I hope he brings his hat. We'll see you tomorrow. Mayhem out. Now it's not going. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media. Sorg, I'm not sure if you know this, but in 1995, the Cubs were terrible at baseball. They were not great.